Tonight on Colonial Sports Center, a little volleyball action, and it's a hockey night in Pittsburgh. The women's team takes on Chatham College. The men's soccer game against the Quinnipiac Bobcats can also be seen on Cops. Stay tuned and find out why. And the football team look to get back on track against Stony Brook. But don't you pout, because this is Colonial Sports Center. The show starts now. Welcome to Colonial Sports Center, <laughs> and Heather's not here. <laughs> I'm so sad. <laughs> that is false. I am not, because Nick Lumley's here. Yeah, that's correct, Brian. Uh, everyone's favorite Irishman's back. I'm Nick Lumley. He's Brian Turpak, and it feels great to be back at the big desk. Well, it's great to have you back. And Heather, if you're watching, you know I still love you. I'm just kidding around. But let's go to the football highlights first, all right? <laughs> well, RMU hiccuped last week against the Monmouth Hawks, snapping a five-game winning streak. Going into Saturday's game, the Colonials had a chance to clinch their 10th winning season in the, in the first 13 years of existence. Joe Walton and friends headed to New York to shake off their winning streak hangover to take on the Stony Brook Seawolves, who were undefeated 4-0 in NEC play. Their non-conference record undefeated? Eh, not so much. 0-4 in non-conference. But that wouldn't stop the Wolves from trying to knock off the Colonials, who also happen to be on a four-game road winning streak. To the greatest island in the world we go. And good news. We averaged 33.6 points per game in the all-time series against the Seawolves first quarter. Eric Zielinski going to find Vince Magnone running his four in the flat. Basically, the only receiving play a fullback will ever have. Gets seven on the play first down. More Magnone on the toss. Oh, the things that make you go boom. Vince Magnone smacking people in the mouth. Sets up first and ten to Stony Brook 13. Zielinski with the play action to Moises Hernandez and comes to the pressure. Just hold on the ball. Bad news. We give up a lot of turnovers. Well, we do force the Wolves to punt on a fourth down, kicking a 50 mile an hour winds, drops at the 37, only a 29 yard punt. Great field position for Bobby Moe on their second drive. First down, going into the wind. Selinski, give it to the fast guy, like Butta. Hernandez slices his way for 17 yards. Two plays later, second down, Brian Harden. Look at that hole. Could drive a bus through there. 20 yards to the giant rectangle in the game of football. This gives you six points. And a Nate DiLorenzo gives you one point. Seven nothing, RMU. Take another look. All blocks accounted for seven nothing. Next drive, Stony Brook. Josh Dudash in the shotgun finds Lionel Suggs in the inside slant. James, James Kazel with a nice hit later in the drive, last play in the first quarter. It's Richie Rich. Erds, you know, Richards burning up the turf and picks up 21 yards. Let's go the other direction. Same drive through dash again, finds Lionel Suggs in the inside slant and somehow slips out of the tackle. Ah, oh, crap, Fry. I think it's time for a drink. Takes it in for six. Extra point, Matt Weeks, the kicker, shanks it. And that's going into the win. Seven to six, RMU, 17 seconds to the second quarter. Play 105 of 326. Selinski steps back, unleashes to Mario Hines with a snag, eludes four tacklers, takes it to the outside, just does not give up Hines. 15 yards on the play. Two downs later, more play action to Hernandez. Opens up the seam to Mario Hines, who gets rocked on the play. It'd be all right, third and goal at the one. Vince Magnone, his first touchdown ever. Congrats to the big man. You know, we should utilize him more on the inside of the 10, 14, 6 next drive. Dude ass shotgun, design draw, finds a hole and scampers eight yards. Negative nine yards rushing for him on the day. Seawolves going for a fourth down shotgun. Running the option, needed four. He doesn't get it. He only gets three. Robert Morris going to get it back on down. Second half, Stony Brook on the offensive. Josh Dudash dumps one off to Dwayne Ellie, who gets the ball stripped. James Kazel does the stripping and gets the recovery. The good ship Colonial is in business. Second down, Eric Selinski back in the pocket. Has all the time in the world, Jarvis Powers. Gets himself open, picks up seven yards, sets up third down, but RMU does not convert Powers. Four grabs, 43 yards in the day. Nate DiLorenzo from 42 yards. 
ah, just wide right. Another miss. Still 14 to 6. The wind is just driving everybody nuts. Next drive. Stony Brook, another punt. Back into the wind. Sean McGinty kicks it only 22 yards. RMU gains possession at the 44 first down. Keep an eye on Selinski. Not going to go down here, but there is a penalty roughing the passer. Tack it onto an eight yard reception by Michael Rogers. More great field position first down at the Stony Brook 22. Pretty sure he's telling you what I just told you, but I'm not a referee. But I did stay at a Holiday Inn last night. First down, Bobby Moe. Watch Jarvis Powers at the bottom of your line. Engages and runs the cross route. Gets himself wide open on the sideline. Gets pushed out right before he gets in the end zone. He's pretty sure he had it. But uh, take another look. You be the judge. If you just take a look, he does kind of step out of bounds. Taking his aggression out onto the turf. However, sets up first and goal. Ryan Listrup does this a lot. Makes it 21 to 6. RMU going in the fourth quarter. Time to make things happen for Stony Brook. You want your quarterback to throw 50 yards? Give him 50 yards. The Wolves set up shop in the RMU zone. Two plays later, Dudash under pressure. Needs to get rid of it. And whoop, whoop. Conti Catino going to lose eight yards on a reception. The coaching staff not happy. Couple drives later, Conti Catino going to get it again and pile drives his way for 12 yards. Moves the sticks, first down Wolves at the RMU 39. Dudash going to drop back and goes deep. But three time NEC Defensive Player of the Week, Mike Nicholas, big time friend of the show, comes up with a pick. Last ditch effort by Dudash and friends and tries to unload and whoop gets tipped. And guess who's there? Mike Nicholas with another INT. What a stud. And that would do it. 21 to 6. Robert Morris. Beating them out, beating the Seawolves out. Eric Selinski, 12 for 18, 128 yards. Brian Harden, 60 yards, one touchdown. Colin Haig, 1.5 sacks, four tackles on Stony Brook sides. Josh Dudash, 18 for 36, two interceptions. And here's the biggest stat of the day. Sean McGintry, the punter, 26.4 average yards per punt. That's just preposterous. And joining us right now is our CSC football analyst, Bill Romango. And Bill, look, I got to tell you, I'm a big fan of the Mango Mohawk, man. Well, thank you, Brian. I've gotten a lot of great comments about the Mango Mohawk, and I think a lot of people like, uh, like the look of it. But now we're going to talk some football. Robert Morris went up to Long Island on a mission and came away with that mission accomplished. Let's take a look at the tape and see how that was done. See, great block here by Ed Hunt. Gives plenty of space for Brian Harden to get up the field. And then you see up the field blocking by Mario Hines. And then a few uh, seconds later, as we roll the tape, you see another great upfield block by Mike Rogers. Gives the freshman Brian Harden his first career touchdown and gives him a chance to get outside. Robert Morris takes the lead, 7-0. We're going to take a look at it one more time. Again, you see great blocking. Vince Magnone, the fullback, and Joe Sedicase, a little bit out of the picture there as the tackle. Puts a man, they put a man on a man. Brian Harden gets up to the sideline, gets to the corner, touchdown. Now in the third quarter, Stony Brook on the offensive. You see the pick play set by the Stony Brook wide receiver, but Brian Pruitt, the safety, is not fooled. He comes up, and it's a fumble. James Kazel recovers. Let's take another look at that from a different angle. We're going to zoom in here, show you that the ball was being taken out. Brian Pruitt made a great play on it, and Kazel comes up and gets the recovery for the Colonials on the very next possession. You see a play action here to Jarvis Powers. But first, look at the great protection by the offensive line for Robert Morris. Gives Eric Selinski all kinds of time to throw. Nice pass to uh, Jarvis. And look at the space that he has between him and the defender. Gets the ball. Gets into the end zone. Oh, not so much. He's down at the two. And he's a little bit frustrated, but great play by him. Robert Morris would score on the ensuing possession. And now we're going to take a look at a great fourth quarter drive by Robert Morris. Nine plays, 47 yards took four minutes and 50 seconds off the clock. This is an extremely big deal for Robert Morris. They've lost uh, a few games over the years by not being able to run the ball in the fourth quarter. They see a great pass play on third down to keep the drive alive. They just keep pounding the ball, pounding the Stony Brook linebackers, giving Robert Morris a chance. Michael Walzer, great punt to put it down inside the 10-yard line at the eight. Robert Morris would come away with the victory in this one, and a big cause of that was because the Colonials were able to finish the game with a great drive by pounding the ball out, giving Stony Brook no chance at a comeback. Doing that has been a problem for Robert Morris in the past, but the O-line took hold of the game and won it for him. And uh, that's how I got the Hawk. Oh, really? So really, what, yeah. what is the deal with the Hawk? Uh, well, the story is I was in dire need of a haircut, and uh, Gus Alonzo, our left tackle, said that I should get a Mohawk. But I would only agree to that on one condition, 
that uh, we would go out there and beat Stony Brook, and of course the rest is history. Oh, wow. Well, what if, what if you guys went out? Uh, let's not go there, Brian. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> now it's uh, time to go around the NEC. Also on Saturday, the Monmouth Hawks pulled off a six-point game winner over Central Connecticut State 19-13. Albany laid the smackdown on Wagner, 34 to zip. Albany putting up 372 total offensive yards, while Wagner's Matt Abbey only threw 21 yards. The St. Francis Red Flash beat out Sacred Heart by a touchdown, 21 to 14. Of course, our beloved put up 21 against Stony Brook and 50 mile an hour wins for the win. What's uh, another word for uh, spelunking? Boy, that's a conundrum. But, but it is also the same case for the title picture in the NEC. All Monmouth needs to do is basically win out in their final two games against St. Francis and Albany. For Robert Morris, they have to win their final two games along with a Monmouth loss to ensure themselves the NEC crown. Stony Brook needs to win out and have both Robert Morris and Monmouth uh, to, has to lose while Albany has the toughest spot as they need to win their final two games against RMU and Monmouth along with a Stony Brook loss. CSC's Kelly Burke, who toughs it out through all the weather conditions, has more on this week's Senior Day home game against the Albany Great Danes. Kelly? Colonials will be at Joe Walton Stadium for their last home game of the season this Saturday at 1 p.m. Joining them will be one of the three teams tied above RMU in the NEC, the Albany Great Danes. Albany has won three of the last four matchups between the two teams. In last year's contest, Colonial split end Michael Rogers had five catches for 99 yards and a touchdown. RMU is currently leading the NEC in sacks, while Albany leads in sacks against. Both teams have shown strong defense throughout the season, which will be a key concept in this week's game. Leading the Colonials in defense will be senior cornerback Mike Nicklaus, who has earned the title of NEC Defensive Player of the Week after having two interceptions and four tackles last weekend. At Joe Walton Stadium, I'm Kelly Burke. Now when we come back, we'll see if the Colonial men's soccer team has what it takes to punch its second straight ticket to the Northeast Conference Tournament, along with girls like in it. spandex who invade the Charles so L. Sewell Center. Welcome back from the break. Hey, uh, Brian, what's your favorite sport to watch this time of year? Well, you know, I do watch football religiously, and I am a huge fan of the Pittsburgh Steelers, but I guess I'm going to have to say volleyball. I love the unis. You really can't go wrong. Well, you've come to the right place, my friend. The women's volleyball team returns to the friendly confines of the Charles L. Sewell Center after playing a month and a half on the road. Head coach Rob Thomas hopes the team has learned from their surprise loss to St. Francis, PA. But Army would have a tough opponent ahead as they welcome last year's conference champions, Long Island to Moon Township. To the Chuck we go. LIU visits the Charles L. Sewell Center. RMU is pumped and ready to go. LIU's Tony Perhot serves the ball. Tony Storino to Emily Walters. Their first miscue of the game. LIU with the point. Blackbirds head coach Toby Renz likes what he sees so far. Elena Gibson gets the ball rolling to Storino to Stanbaugh as they volley it over here. And you know, the, the statisticians were just quivering in fear. Gibson to Storino to Cassie Lee, and they get the ball over. LIU just can't put it over. RMU with the point. Blackbird served back to Bobby Moe as Storino gives to Jeanette Schneider with the five ball with the backyard killer. Jasmine Perez serves for LIU. RMU back, and Jeanette Schneider with the kill. The champs continue their dominance as they volley the ball over to Robert Morris here. And there we go, and they really take advantage because there's no defenders in the back. They win the first game 30 to 21. Game two, LAU serves, and RMU volleys. Emily Woltis back to, back to LAU with the tip, and they really found the open space on the court for the kill. Sophomore Cassie Lee from Vista, California will serve the ball over the net here for the Lady Colonials. LIU will really take advantage here, but then Emily Woltis gives the free ball to Elena Gibson and the front court says, is it too early for flapjacks for the kill? LAU serves to Robert Morris, and they'll volley it back to the Blackbirds. Back and forth they go, but here, they're just too good. LIU with the point. Elena Gibson serves. LIU hits it back, but Emily Woltis is gonna get a little revenge with the block ski. LIU's going to carry the ball. Robert Morris with the point. Stepana Semich serves the ball. Robert Morris hits it back. 
Back and forth they go. Tony Storino to Stanbaugh. LIU will continue its play, and they will hit Tony Storino here for the point. LIU is up two games to none. Here, Trevon Dyson really found the emphatic kill for the win. Handshakes and hand pounds. LIU, win, LIU wins three games to none. The women's volleyball team was upended by Long Island, three games to none. Junior Emily Waltus tallied 10 kills and two digs. Outside hitter Cassie Lee had seven kills and four digs, along with junior setter Tony Strina, who dished out 27 assists and eight digs in the loss. From the court to the trails, the men's and women's cross country teams finished up their seasons at the NEC Championships in the Bronx last Friday. The men's team finished fifth with a point total of 173. The powerhouse Quinnipiac Bobcats took home the trophy for the second time in three years. For the Colonials, junior Phillips Thompson ran the best time for Bobby Moe at 26.35, placing 12th, earning himself a spot on the 2006 NEC All-Conference team. The women's team placed 6th out of 11 teams. Freshman Emily Ingle finished 14th. The best for Bobby Moe, running 19.09, Sarah and Antonatus. Michelle Crow and Brittany Strait all placed in the top 50. For both teams, some runners, season may continue if they are selected to participate at the NCAA Mid-Atlantic Regionals and the IC4A slash ECAC Championships. This week in the Northeast Conference, we just released the men's basketball preseason rankings. The 2005 Conference Champion Monmouth Hawks were chosen to repeat. Our very own Robert Morris Colonials were picked to finish second as they are led by all-conference preseason player A.J. Jackson, NEC Rookie of the Year, Jeremy Chappelle. Long Island is picked third. Central Connecticut and Quinnipiac are tied for fourth, followed by Wagner, Fairleigh Dickinson, St. Francis, New York, Sacred Heart, Mount St. Mary's, and St. Francis, Pennsylvania was selected to finish last. The defending NEC champion Colonials had a chance to again clinch an NEC playoff berth last weekend. However, they had to win their two games against Quinnipiac and CCSU. Friday, they hosted the Bobcats at the North Athletic Complex. With 182 people on hand to witness the playoff bid, Bobby Moe took to the field, led by Ryan Zabinski and Yasik Presnovic. One note on the game, Jason Paletta did not dress. He scored a red card at Sacred Heart. But with that being said, off to the highlights we go. And game one of the weekend, like I said, they needed to win both to get another NEC playoff berth. Quinnipiac won 3-3 three three in the NEC first half. Army trying to play it in the Bobcat zone. Connor Kern Hayes using his head. Takes quite a fall, but he'd be all right. Bobcats with the ball. Number nine, Alex Atchikabu. Remember that guy. Tries to take it around Mark Klabnik, but great defense with the steal. Plays it out. Looks like he's done that all year long. Still first half. Army on the offensive. Yesik for Novik. Nice pass to Ryan Zabinski. Wide open. Tries to set one up. Going to boot one off his left foot, top shelf, goes in, goal. It puts the lotion in the basket or else it gets the hose again. 21 minutes into the game, 1-0 Bobby Moe. Here comes the Bobcats, but not for long. Zabinski with a nice slide, but it's a foul. Now, in the circle is CSC's producer, Dan Yost, who is now deemed bad luck because the free kick, yeah. Rain dance goes in a minute after we score. Francis Kumavula cranks his third of the season, 1-1 one -one ensuing drive. More Mavula, get out of my way, and whoop! <laughs> Breaking it to the outside, Rockets won wide right. Seven shots in the day for him, Motown with the corner kick, and sometimes you just got to use your head. Bobby Moe with an awesome layout, but it's blocked. Second half, Anthony Paterno going to try to set up a one-timer in front of Matt Felice, and Mavula slips, no goal. Felice sits on it, that'd be a save. A little Quinnipiac defense, Obinski with a shot, and Paul Fleck, I regret nothing. Four saves on the day for him, three minutes left in the game. Off a foul, free kick, Sabinski kicks it over to Mark Klabnik. Quick. Get through the chopper. Don't be fooled. No deflection here. Klamnik gets the goal. Just skips past Fleck. Four shots, one goal, and one assist for him. Last ditch effort by the Bobcats. Danilo Siobhan with the shot. Felice. Beautiful save. Yeah. I do that all the time. Let's make it another one. Presnovic on the breakaway. Breaks free of Fleck, but loses the angle and has to reset. And, and whoop. Tries to go up. And, whoop. Making plays like no other takes a shot. But are you kidding me? It's blocked. Keep your eyes on number 12, Curran Hayes, splits the defenders, but not going to be able to get it past Fleck. That was his only shot in the day, RMU now just trying to kill some time in the corner, and tensions are running a little bit high here. Matt Paradise gets pushed over. Now check out the circle. Alexander Achukabu, the guy I mentioned earlier, intentionally walking on Paradise's leg as Achilles tendon in chaos would ensue. Klabnik and Hayes, first of the scene. Watch Bobcats number 18. Graciano Brito bulls over the pile. Bench is cleared at this point. Nick, what's the first rule of Fight Club? Don't talk about Fight Club. That's correct. Bobcats, Tyler Sheik, going to get the red card. 
The Quinnipiac coach actually takes responsibility for the scuffle. Kind of looks like he's unleashing on Coach Denniston, but rather is blaming his own team. The game is over. However, Bobby Moe wins it 2-1. to one. Francis Mavula, one goal for Quinnipiac. Bradford Hobson had two shots. Quinnipiac, seven cards altogether. Two of them were red. Robert Morris, Ryan Sabinski had a goal. So did Mark Klabnik. And Jacek Presnovic had seven shots on the day. Well, on Friday, the men's soccer team opens up the NEC tournament Friday against the regular season champion, Monmouth Hawks, who are currently ranked 15th in the NCAA on their home pitch. Last season, Robert Morris defeated Monmouth on their home turf in the NEC championship to make their first NCAA College Cup appearance since the, the mid-90s. Monmouth won, only, won, the, won their only regular season match with Robert Morris, defeating them 3-1. to one. The winner of the game will play the winner of St. Francis and Fairley Dickinson on Sunday. Robert Morris held both teams to scoreless ties on the year. Captain Alan Brown and the remaining seniors hope to repeat their, as conference champions. We wish the soccer team the best of luck this weekend. Okay. I realize we're in the first week of November, but it's almost here. Only a very short three months and one week away. Fight Night 17. Listen up. A date has been set February 9th, 2007. The Chucky Soul Center will again host the biggest event on campus. Keep your TVs tuned right here because CSE will deliver any new information on being a fighter in the weeks to come. Bartender, I really need something on ice. I want some Chatham Cougars on the rocks. I thought you were about to start talking. With the leaves falling all over the Robert Morris campus, that can only mean one thing. R Robert Morris's women's ice hockey team at the Island Sports Center. Coach Todd Handerhan and the Lady Colonials return home after a week hiatus to square off against Ch the Chatham College Club team. To the Island Sports Center we go. We, RMU welcomes the Chatham College Cougars to the Island Sports Center. We start off in the first period. RMU will work the puck around here as Megan Picnic gives it to Maria Olson, who puts it in it. Megan Picnic with the rebound. 1-0, Robert Morris. Olsen here is at it again as she skates into traffic. And she'll pass the puck to the one and only Megan Picnic for her second goal of the game. It's deja vu. Olsen passes to Megan. Put it in the Picnic basket. yabba dabba doo Yes, Picnic has her third goal of the game. It looks like Chatham's going to clear the puck out of their zone, but au contraire, mon frere. Morgan Biker with a little poke past the goalie with the short-handed goal, and she's greeted by all her friends. Yay! Still in the first period, freshman Amanda Centuli sends a rocket past the goalie. 5-0, Robert Morris. Enter new Chatham goalie, Brent Scott, who's greeted 19 seconds in by a Kristen Miles goal. Miss Scott won't be sending Robert Morris a holiday fruit basket anytime soon. Robert Morris clobbers the Cougars. 13-0. Bobby Moe dismantles Chatham, 13 to zip. Sophomore Megan Picnic had five goals and an assist. Junior Marie Olson also helped the Colonial cause as she scored a goal and ha had six assists on the game. RMU travels to Rochester to face off against RPI this weekend. Wow, Nick, that was a beatdown. That was a beatdown. But uh, tell me, what is the difference between field hockey and ice hockey? I don't know. Field hockey's on grass? Yeah, that is the difference. Wow. <laughs> well, I guess one difference uh, that field hockey <laughs> season is just about over while the ice hockey season, well, is just getting into gear. The grass hockey ladies wrapped up their 2006 campaign against the Fairfield Stags. By the way, I love the logo. But basically, the only thing Bobby Moe wanted to do was to wrap up the season on a high note and finish conference play with more than just one win. Let's head out to Joe Wass Stadium and see if they could do, well, just that. The Fairfield Stags are look, uh, coming off a 6-0 loss to Lock Haven, so that means that tensions are high for them. And Caitlin Quinn going to tank out some frustration on Sam Wallace, pushes her over in a nice Oscar-worthy fall. But still first half, Megan Kelly plays it up to Gwen Dolphin, who tries to race it in, but gets tripped up by the turf. Ball goes out of bounds. And look out, because here comes Emily Janice on the breakaway. Red Bull gives you wings, but passes it off rather than challenge Katie Dunlap in the net. And there wasn't anyone there for the one time where Chelsea Hicks tries to tap one in, but Dunlap says, just get out of here. Maude Janice with a slapper to the net, gets deflected, but Dunlap makes a great save. Nine on the day for her. The Stag still trying to get something going. 
Paxton Delaney will have it poked out by Sarah Schrott. Schrott pushes her down, draws a whistle, but the game would end up going to overtime, and Bobby Moe would drop their last game of the year, unfortunately. Two to one. Chelsea Hicks for Fairfield had one goal. Emily Janice had one goal for Robert Morris. Sarah Schrott had one goal. Sam Wallace, three shots. And Kate Dunlap, nine saves on the night for her. On tap for this week, Army, the Army football team plays Albany at 1 o'clock at Joe Walton Stadium. The men's soccer team plays host Monmouth in the first round of the NEC tournament. The winner plays the uh, plays St. Francis or FDU. The men's hockey team hosts CHA rival Niagara Friday and Saturday at 7.35 at the Island Sports Center. Finally, the women's volleyball team finished their home schedule as they play Quinnipiac and Central Connecticut State Saturday and Sunday. Well, Nick, it was great to have you back. It honestly was, and I think we did a pretty good show. You did great. Well, of course, I, I can't say enough about uh, the great Brian J. Turpak. Uh, thank you. You're a senior this year, right? In fact, I am. So this is it. This is it, folks. You better be tuning in. So, I mean, this is the last time you're ever going to be able to see this guy, so make sure that you're here every Thursday night because you just don't know when he's going to pop in. Nick, the Irishman, Lumley, one of CSC's finest establishments ever, but obviously, good show. You're making me blush, Brian. Oh, I'm sorry. But anyway, uh, for all of you out there in Colonial Country, make sure that you come back next Thursday. This has been Colonial Sports Center.